Hello everyone, it's time to get down to business and scrub some rust off this car. The rear cross member, yeah, it's the scariest part, but I'm not going to take it out. No need to get that extreme. Instead, I'll hit it hard with needle scaler, slap on some zinc paint and call it good. Of course, as soon as I started, the first thought popped into my head. Why didn't I just take it in for sandblasting? But I've already started playing around, so I'll see it through. This could take a week, maybe two, but most of it's minor stuff, just some rust spots to tackle. I'll be using a wire or nylon brush on the body with an angle grinder or drill. As the cross member, that's a jar for a needle scaler. No other way to get through to the metal. But hey, the needle scaler is a perfect for this job. Progress with the rear arches. Check it out, brand new side skirts and welded in rotten arches on both sides. Because the rust was chewing through both, now I just need to scrub those rusty spots, paint them with anti-corrosion paint and we're good to go, for now. Looks like it'll be an exciting couple of weeks ahead. Let me show you how the needle scaler works. Time to get into less filming and more working. Slowly but surely, we're moving forward. I even removed the air suspension tank, or whatever it's called, so I could reach the inner side of the passenger side sill. Not sure how much good that will do, but I'll scrub it and paint it anyway. At least I'll be able to keep the rust at bay for another year or so. Should've gone for sandblasting. Yeah, I probably should have done some blasting and hit it with some good zinc paint. Right from the start, that would have been the smart move. This year I'm going to play around, but if the rust shows up again before fall, I'll definitely go for the sand blasting route. No more fooling around next time. You see, with electric tools it's tough to reach all the tricky spots. Everything uneven, with nooks and crannies everywhere. That's easy to reach, you scrub, and what's hard to reach, you kind of leave behind. Not ideal. Little by little I'm getting there, now it's time to start on the rear arches. You can clearly see that the new metal has been welded in. And it looks pretty good. Now I just need to scrub off the rust and knock off the old stuff with a needle scaler. Careful not to go too hard though, I don't want to damage the metal. The other side of the arc looks solid. There are a few spots of surface rust near the brake sensor connectors, but otherwise nothing too bad. No rust holes, so I'll keep scrubbing, get as close to bare metal as I can and move forward.
it's a slow progress, really slow. The kind of job where's a ton of hassle but very few little reward at the end. I'm always amazed at how much travel the front wheels have. Wow, they drop so low, you could practically fit a small person inside the wheel arch. But the good thing is, the front of the car usually doesn't have as much rust. All the salt and dirt tend to fly towards the back, so not much scrubbing needed up here, just a few problem spots. You don't need to scrub everything spotless. The main goal is to get rid of any hanging rust and expose the bare metal. Polishing, that's pointless. If you are wondering why I'm doing all this, honestly, I'm not even sure anymore. By the way, I wouldn't recommend using the needle scaler on cars with thin metal, like Japanese models. It's not the right tool. It'll dent everything. This is more for hitting the frame or at least the cross member, not thin body parts. I knocked off as much rust as I could. Could I have done better? Maybe. But it'll do. The most important thing is getting down to the metal. Next I'll wash all of the dust, dirt and grease from the spots where I worked. Then degrease everything and start painting. Hopefully this will hold up through winter. I've scrubbed and washed the underside of a car. One arch and one sill are even degreased, ready to paint. It, it took about half an hour to wash everything down and even though it seemed clean, there were still some dirty spots. Not ideal. I won't paint the entire underside in one go. Only have time in the evenings, so it'll, I'll do one arch and one sill tonight. Now here's the interesting part, what I'm going to paint with. I decided to use zinc paint after talking to some local corrosion experts, they recommended scrubbing off the rust and use the zinc paint. I'll give it a shot. The paint isn't cheap, you can buy it in spray cans or, or in a larger containers. I went with a half liter bottle that weighs one kilogram because it's mostly zinc. The idea is that it will react with the rust and stop it from spreading into the body. In theory, the rust will transfer into the paint and get neutralized. We'll see how that goes. The paint is a thick sludge, definitely needs to be thinned out. But how much? Let's just eyeball it. Well, that should be enough. <laughs> My paint still doesn't fit, of course. But I managed to scrape most of the paint out into a bigger container, so now I can mix it. <laughs> the 
The easy part is here. Time to paint. I'll make sure to apply it well, no gaps and just the right amount. Half an hour later I am already on the second coat. What's great is that you can clearly see where the paint applied. It starts dark grey and dries to light grey. Two coats should do the trick. Alright, we are done. The paint has dried and it turned out to be pretty interesting, rough and textured. But it's holding up great. I was worried at first that it wouldn't stick well to the stripped surface, but the manufacturer mentioned online that you should roughen up the surface before painting, ideally we say to paint on the sanded surface. I was a bit nervous, but no worries, it came out perfectly fine, it actually looks kind of cool. Now what's left is to repeat this process on the rest of the car. The over arc, the underside, the rear cross member, the front cross member and the front arches. It shouldn't take long, just a few more days and I'll be finished. Oh, and spraying the second coat really works wonders. It saves so much paint compared to brushing it on. For the underside I'm going to spray on the second coat with a spray can, which is going to make things a lot easier. It's also a bit pricier. It's hard to believe I'm finally getting closer to wrapping up this anti-corrosion project. I've got the exhaust pipe covered in plastic along with a gearbox and drive shaft. The rear differential and the rear cross member are already painted, so now it's just a waiting game until everything dries. The most important part is the underside. That's where I applied the thickest coat of paint. The zinc paint really did the trick, and whatever was left I spread out across the rest of the car. Next up is filling in the cavities. I've got a gun and some wax specifically for that task. All I need to do is jack up the car again, take off the wheels and then we can get moving. Finally, we reach the fun part, spraying something other than just paint. First up is wax, Noxodule 750, which is perfect for cavities and those hard to reach spots. I haven't tried it before, so I'm not sure how good it is, but it comes highly recommended online, so I went ahead and bought it. I picked up I picked up two bottles of Noxodil 750 and two bottles of Noxodil 900, which is bitumen based. I also grabbed a simple anti-corrosion spray gun to give it a shot and see how it works. Alright, time to get going with the anti-corrosion spraying. The wax is nearly everywhere now, just a few small spots left to finish it off. But now I am excited to start with the bitumen. I got Noxodil 900D, which again I am not super familiar with, but people online recommend it. So we'll be spraying it over zinc coated areas. In theory it should work just fine. To prep for spraying I covered some parts with foil. 
the airbags, the wires, the connectors, everything else is ready to be sprayed. Finally, I'm moving to the front of the car. But before I can spray the bitumen, I need to cover up some clean and delicate parts. Like with the buster unit I accidentally found, or with high sensor and a few other connectors. The magical front section. There's going to be less spraying here, but still plenty of parts to cover with plastic and foil. Once that's done, I can start spraying. It'll be good. The engine bay is all protected now. Rust hasn't been tackled yet, but I'm going to apply the bitumen. And after that, I can take a break and grab some lunch. So bon appetit! Where to start? It's looking shiny and new, sure there's still some spots I haven't painted, places I didn't quite reach, but it doesn't really matter anymore. I'll wait for it to dry and later tonight I'll come back and hit those missed spots with some more bitumen. Well, it looks like the anti-corrosion coating is finally nearing completion. After that, I'll just need to put all the protective covers back on, which will take some time too. I think I've done enough. If there are areas where I didn't spray bitumen, it probably means they didn't need it. And if there are spots I didn't clean or remove rust from, that's probably how it was meant to be. This work from home, do it yourself anti-corrosion job is definitely enough. Yep, there are spots I didn't spray, but all the key areas got coated properly. Especially the zinc paint. I didn't hold back there. It took way longer than I wanted, almost two months. Especially with all the welding. But hey, I hope the rust doesn't come back anytime soon. Now, after two long months, I can finally roll the car out of garage. Perfect. Anti-corrosion spraying done. And here's all the products I used, the wax, Noxodil 750 and whatever else I found at the local store, because I forgot to order enough the first time. Then there's the bitumen Noxodil 900 and some more from the local store, since I didn't order quite enough. For rust I mostly used zinc, Golvanol paint, which is expensive. Those cans cost 34 euros each, and the spray cans were around 24 euros. Then there's Dinitrol and Chameleon Zinc, about 10 euros per can. Bitumen was around 10 euros a can, and wax cost about 11 euros. I don't know total cost exactly, must be around 190 euros. I put the price on the screen. Plus there were sanding discs, sandpaper and of course a few tools. The anti-corrosion spray gun was 15 euros and my favorite tool, the pneumatic needle scaler, was 30 euros. That one helped the most with getting rid of the old rust. The anti-corrosion gun broke down along the way. I lost the nozzle somewhere in the wheel arches. What can you do? It did the job, so maybe I'll clean it up for the next time. Now I'm just waiting for a bitumen to dry, and then I can put the engine covers back on. Thanks for watching, you saw how much fun is to get this anti-corrosion job done. That's it for now, see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you watched the 
very end. Bye.